It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission really is to inspire. Our mission has always been to empower. And our mission is to make sure you have all of the resources that are necessary to execute the big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And I have the honor and the privilege of talking to the one and only Dr. Monique Flemings. What's going on, Dr. Monique? How are you? Hey, Shay, how are you? I'm so excited and honored to be a part of this. Thank you so very much for having me. I'm excited, but I wish we were back in Aruba. I wish we were doing this in Aruba. We got to do that next time, by the way, when you're not so busy and have so much going on. Got to find me five minutes. So I can say the show is hanging with the one and only Dr. Monique Fleming, who I've had the opportunity not only to follow for a number of years, but meet and meet out the country for the first time face-to-face -face. and totally amazing. She has an amazing retreat, does some incredible things with women, but that's a, that's a topic for another time. Um, this, this, this conversation that we're having about um, unapologetically unmuzzled, a lot of unapologetically, a lot of syllables. And um, so here's the question I have. Why that title? What does it mean? And why is it relevant to women now more than ever, unapologetically unmuzzled. You got it all right. Sounds like you enjoyed yourself a little bit too much when we were in Aruba. We had, <laughs> had a an great amazing time. time. It was so phenomenal. But you know, you ask a really good question, unapologetically unmuzzled, why now? And what does that mean for women? Well, I have the honor of, of working with and coaching and training uh, women leaders, professional women. And the interesting thing is that, you know, as women leaders, we are CEOs, we are, you know, entrepreneurs, we're in the boardroom, we are presidents, we are, you know, directors, and we have degrees and so many things that we have achieved, but yet I find that we are still muzzled. We still have a place where we cannot be authentic sometimes. We're still, you know, um, shrinking back. Sometimes we're lacking confidence. Sometimes we're just afraid to really be our full authentic self. So I create um, these programs and these spaces for professional high achieving women to come together, learn how to increase their clarity and their confidence, which will ultimately help them increase their coins. You can't really increase your coins without really understanding your clarity and increasing your confidence. I do a lot of training around confidence and the confidence gap because that is the key to helping women become unmuzzled unapologetically. And the reason why we do it unapologetically is because it's just a time for women to no longer make apology for who they are, how they've been created and what they carry. You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, and it might just be me, you help folks, help women specifically with confidence and with clarity. And I happen to have been in a room with you and the individuals that are there, I mean, you know, these are folks who are her moms. Uh, these are folks who have corporate jobs. These are folks who are entrepreneurs. Uh, these individuals you work with, they seem on the outside to me to be doing very, very, very well. So I uh, got to ask, What's the biggest challenge that these professional, high-achieving women uh, have with finding clarity and confidence? I mean, it, it just seems to me it's already there, but I, I may be missing something. I know I'm a guy. I know I'm on the <laughs> outside looking in, but there might be some people that are leaning in too saying, yeah, yeah, they seem they got it all together. So why are, what are they, what's the struggle, I should say, with having the confidence and the clarity? Oh my goodness, that is such a good question because, you know, women, we are masters at makeup. You know, we have an ability to put ourselves together and we look good on the outside. We look good and we're strong. We're strong and we're courageous and we're full of boldness, but sometimes we are masking some things on the inside. And I find that many women that I work with struggle with confidence and it's usually around self-sabotaging thinking, our mindsets and something that we're struggling with that we really need to deal with. And so, yes, women that come uh, to me, they are coming from all different backgrounds. They are moms, they are, you know, high achievers, but still they're struggling with that confidence. They're struggling with those self-sabotaging uh, behaviors and thought 
uh, patterns. They're just struggling in that. And then the other part is I find that sometimes you get to a point where you're looking for community. Community is so strong and it's so important at this level. And sometimes you look around the room and you're the only sister there. You're the only woman there. And it is so needed and necessary to find yourself in a place of collaboration, to find yourself in a place of space of community, because that will bring some strength to you as well. And so those are the things that I try to bring when I bring women together is not only clarity and communication and collaboration, but some community as well. Wow. Where did this passion come from? I mean, this passion that you have to to help women uh, be more or have more or serve more or give more or whatever the mores are these days. Where did this burning desire come from and what was your struggle to find your role in what you're doing now? <laughs> Man, I'm laughing because really this is my whole life's journey. This is who I am. I work with women who look like me, who are me. And so my passion comes from my own struggle. My passion comes from, you know, struggling with low self-esteem. My passion comes from, you know, uh, being the best kept secret. My that passion comes from working with women who are introverts, who really have a voice, they have something to say. How do you get past all of that? So I understand it. And my drive has been because I know what it feels like to struggle. I know what it feels like to not have the words to say or not be able to get into the right places. And so I do what I do out of my own passion and out of my ability to uh, how, how I advance myself and been able to grow myself. I use those same skills and same principles with helping women. And then I have that gift of strategizing and helping them just really be able to see who they are and to pull out those inner gifts. But it comes from my own passion and it comes from my own life. It comes from just, you know, those things in life. My my unapologetically unmuzzled story, if I could just share really quickly, yes, is we, about we, we want to know. I was, I was about to go there. So thanks. Yeah. Just jump right into it. Because they're like, yeah, we, she yeah, has it all together, Shay. I read the bio <laughs> below. I see she's a senior pastor. I'm reading the bio below. She got a couple letters behind her name. I'm reading the bio below. She got a hubby or her husband or whatever. She, she got it going on, okay? So it seems natural she want to talk about clarity. What's the backstory, Shay? What's the origin? Where's the oh. where's struggle she had to go to? So if you don't mind being transparent, I know it wasn't part of this. We want to hear about it. We really do. Yes, yes. My, my, I have several unapologetically unmuzzled stories, but one of my stories is really when I was a 16-year-old girl, I was so impressionable like any other uh, young woman in high school, and I admired my teachers and my instructors, and I'll never forget there was an English uh, teacher who told me that my speaking was pretty much horrible. She began to be very uh, critical about the way I sound and the way I talked in my dialect. And I did not realize at that time that when she said those things to me, it crushed me and it stopped me, not only from speaking, but it stopped me from just being authentically who I was. Those words, you know, crush me. And people say sometimes words can't hurt you, but words can definitely hurt you. And so I found myself the next few years going through life, uh, going through college, you know, being involved, but being muzzled because I was always self-conscious of how I sound. I was always self-conscious of how I put words together because in the back of my mind, I could hear what that um, um, high school teacher, at high school English teacher told me. And so I kept having these self-sabotaging thoughts about how I sounded, um, uh, my dialect, the ability to put words together. And it really uh, put me in a place of not being able to connect with people. And so I found myself, even though I was out there, even though it looked like I was thriving, I wasn't thriving because I was not being my authentic self. I was afraid. I was muzzled. I was embarrassed. I had all these things happening on the inside and nobody knew it, but I was still going through life and I was still producing to some degree. But it took me really recognizing one day that I was being truly muzzled and that these words that were spoken over me as a 16 year old had affected my whole life. Once I began to realize that I had power in my mouth, that my voice mattered, not just my speaking voice, but my personality, who I was, that I could begin to come forth, not only to speak 
speaking, but in my personality. I did not realize how much my speaking was connected to my personality and my ability to connect with people as well. So I recognize that and that is one of my stories as to why I help women so much is because I understand what it feels like to have some words kind of spoken over you that actually shuts you down and causes you not to be your full authentic self yeah thanks for sharing man you're you're truly incredible I, um I, I want to bring up a topic under the unapologetically unmuzzled which is which is leadership and leadership means different things to different people so I would love to first to get your definition of leader. And then secondly, how can one be a leader of one? I heard that before, before they can be a leader of many. So here's the question, obviously. Leadership, what's your definition of a leader? And it means different things, different folks. And then for the professional woman to say, yeah, uh, I'm a leader in my home. Wait, Shay, I'm a leader in my community. I'm, I'm a leader in, in my job or in my profession. Um, what's one idea you can share with them or a skill set as a leader that they could use to immediately be able to do a better job? I love talking about leadership as well. This is my this is my quote about leadership is that leadership is not about how many people uh, that serve you, but rather how many people do you serve? I think it's so important that leadership must be equated to servanthood. If you feel like you are a leader, if you think you are a leader, then my question is, are you a servant? It's all about serving others and making sure that others are propelled and pushed forward. That's what leadership is all about. I would say my number one thing as a leader uh, to encourage anyone that's in this area is to look for places to serve, look for places where you can help other people's lives become better. It's not about them looking to you, but it's really more about you helping to propel people and helping to push someone forward. Uh, leadership is truly about how can you make someone else's life better? That is, that's my, my, my motto for leadership is when you are a leader, how can you make someone else's life better and how can you contribute to their well-being? Who's been a mentor along this journey of life that's helped you? Um, you know, they say success is a team sport, which I love to say, right? You can only get so far by yourself. So along this journey, you've had so many mentors. I understand that in different areas of your life. But if you had to pick one mentor and say, hey, this is what I've learned from this mentor that I'm going to pass on to the happy entrepreneur community. Um, who's the mentor, if you want to mention a name? And what's the lesson learned? They can make our lives a little bit better than it is today. Oh my goodness, Shay. Now that's a complicated question because I've had so many mentors. I really have, man, I've had mentors in ministry. I've had minist you know, mentors in speaking and coaching. I've had uh, mentors that have mentored me in business, mentors, um, Wow, even in education, there's so many mentors. There's so many people that have contributed to me. They have poured into me, which is such a blessing. It really is. Oh, I, I, I can't name just one, but I think what I would say is that what I've learned from all of my mentors, I have found this common thread kind of in all of them, and that is a level of selflessness a level of just being there for other people and making sure that you're not trying to get any accolades or any pats on the back, but a level of selflessness, which kind of goes back to what I said earlier about being a servant is that really leadership is about serving others, helping others, platforming others. And I think that's been the biggest thread that I've taken away from all of my of uh, various mentors is that when you learn how to serve others, that you as a leader grow as well. You don't have to worry about someone, you know, looking for you or you trying to grow your own platform or you trying to push to the front of the room, but by serving others, you know, really by giving to others to making sure that people have what they need, then in that regard, you grow as a leader. I think that's the common thread that I have seen with all of my mentors uh, throughout my life. You know, one of the things that I admire about you talk about leadership, leadership and growing is um, I heard you mention several times that when you decided to do a retreat um, out of the country, that it was the first time you did it. You were scared, but you did it anyway. Uh, what were you thinking at the time when you said, I'm going to do something that you had never done before? Because we like to get a window into the soul of who you are here and say, wow, 
what was she thinking and, and what was what gave her the courage to move forward because it had to be very very scary she i'm thinking it's scary and then and then secondly secondly behind that um what are some techniques or some uh, methodologies or framework that you would share for someone like myself that's think about doing some big things but uh it, it's a little bit uncomfortable but i believe it's within my grasp right it's a little bit uncomfortable but i believe it's within my grasp two-part question what were you thinking when you decided to do something <laughs> and go out the country crazy 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 and secondly what can you offer to us to help us expand our comfort zone because it's called comfort zone for a reason by the way yes, i'm comfortable it is it is. That is that's so good. So first, let me say, what was I thinking? I was having one of those moments. We were planning out our year. You know how you are as a business you know, owner and you're planning out your year with your women because I do a lot of training with women. And so um, originally it was like, yes, we were doing this training. Um, I had women in my classes, women in my coaching programs, women in my academy. And we're like, okay, great. We're going to do a retreat. But I've done retreats before in the United States, but I've never done a retreat out of the country. So you're right. What made me decide to do Aruba? Because originally we were looking to do it in the States. And then we said, hey, we started looking at you know going out of the country and doing it and we kind of pitched it out there really to be quite honest not knowing if people were really going to grab it and so as a risk taker as a leader sometimes you have to be a risk taker sometimes you just got to step out there you just got to do it and so we we put it out there and see if the ladies would grab it they grabbed hold to it and so lo and behold we're planning this international retreat and we are excited and it's going to be wonderful and everything is going well and we have everything planned and everything is exciting and we are packed our bags are packed because i don't know if you know or not um uh, shay but the treat was actually not planned for april it was planned for a different time and so we're oh. ready our bags are packed the, the original retreat was planned for november of last year and out of nowhere we got hit with that hurricane that came in Florida and we could not get out of the country. So half of my ladies ended up in Aruba and the other half of us uh, ended up here. And so I was devastated because first wow. of all, I've never done an international retreat. Number two, yeah. we are all here. We're not in Aruba and we had to make a pivot. We had to make a critical pivot. And I promise you, it was not comfortable. It was scary. I was like, oh my goodness, what are we doing? But I got on virtual. We did some virtual sessions with the ladies online. We made it work. You know, for those days, it wasn't a rule, but we were all, you know, looking in, in the TV screen, you know, um, and I taught and I trained from that place because I had prepared. Everything was, I mean, our bags were packed. We were within a few hours of getting on the plane before we got the call that, that they were shutting down Florida and we could not get out of Florida to get to Aruba so we had to make a pivot so I, I share this because in business and being an entrepreneur everything does not always go well everything does not go the way that you plan it things don't always go the way that you expect it but you have to have some grit and some tenacity and you've got to have some stick to itness you know I'm not sure if that's a word or not but that's the word I'm going to use some stick to itness so we pivoted and we did a virtual event for the ladies to honor that time. And then we began to plan for April, which we ended up inviting you to come and be with us. But we had that. Yay. Event. I'm, I'm yes. sorry I didn't get out the first that, time that around. Even, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, right. But I'm glad I was there this time. OK. <laughs> exactly. And that's that's the point I want to make is that we <laughs> had it planned for a certain time. We thought that was the plan, but we pivoted and we were able to do something different connect bring you in and it took our retreat you know experience a whole nother level yes having you there and i share all that to say that as you're in this entrepreneurial journey you got to go with the flow that's one thing i've learned is how to go with the flow don't fight the funk as we would say <laughs> now don't i'm sure my the age. Funk. and and the <laughs> folks are probably wondering how did your faith play a part in this as well i mean you know you know i know some folks um whether you're a believer or not i have to be a believer by the way i'm a christian i have to be a believer you don't have to be but i want you to hear how her source uh her faith her belief and i believe she is a christian she'll tell you herself um i want to know what were you feeling and what were you thinking and was it some side conversation like you know show it, why me why now i'm not saying you were joe but i'm just saying it seemed to be a problem so i'm just curious how did your faith uh, play a role in this and and what were you feeling as you was going through it you are absolutely correct 
I was feeling all types of emotions because I'm very transparent. I was upset. I was frustrated. I was embarrassed. I was angry, but I was having conversations with God. Just like you said, I was like, Lord, what are you trying to teach us? What are you trying to show us? What happened? How all those questions were going on. But in all of that, I trust God. And I just was like, okay, I don't know why we can't go as we have planned, but I trust that he did not want us to go. It's not, it's not comfortable. As you were talking about earlier, we're already, I was already out of my comfort zone. So now I'm out of my comfort zone. And in the middle of me being out of my comfort zone, which I call the unknown zone, then I'm dealing with another storm. And I teach this all the time. So basically I was experiencing what I teach all the time is that when you step out of the comfort zone into the unknown zone, there is another unknown zone that may show up as well before you get to the purpose zone, because there is a comfort zone the unknown zone, and then the purpose zone. But it is in the unknown zone. It is in the middle of life when you begin to experience really who you are. It is in the middle of life when you begin to really grow. And in the middle of those circumstances, that's exactly when some things can be birthed in you. So I don't know what was exactly birthed in me, you know, but I promise you, yeah, we were having some conversations. But one thing I do know for sure, looking back on it now, I do know that when we went to Aruba, uh, in April uh, with you, that was the timing of God for this particular event. It really was. There's nothing you could have told me anything different. Uh, that was the timing of God, not only for the event, but for the for the women that came as well. It was critical for them to be there at this particular time. And so when you're working with people, especially as a faithpreneur, a faith entrepreneur, and you're partnering with God, you have to know that sometimes he will change some things because he is our source and he is the one that is bringing those people there. So this was the divine time for those ladies to be there, to connect, to get what they needed, the healing, the sisterhood. It had to be in April. It, it wasn't supposed to be in November because it was God's timing and it it wasn't anything about me. And I feel like I'm about to preach. So I better stop. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you go on, you go on because this is very, very important. And the message for everyone that's out there listening, at least from my view of the world is you can be afraid. You can be yes. scared and you can still take action. See, see that's the good oh, news. Yeah. They don't have to go together. You don't have to feel like taking any action. You could not want to do it. You could be uncertain, but you can still take action. Um, do two things if you can. One, tell us, um, what type of clients is your firm taking on now, if any? So the folks that are listening know that. And then how can they best connect with you? So the type of clients that you work with, maybe the problems that they have. So folks listen and say, okay, I get it. And then how can anyone that's watching right now that wants to stay in this conversation, wants to follow you, wants to know what you're up to? I know you're constantly, depending on when they watch this, that they're watching it live, you're doing an event coming up. If they're watching it tomorrow, you're doing an event coming up. If you're watching a year from now, she probably got an event coming up. So the reason I say that is, who do you work with? And where can they, how can they best connect with you? You're absolutely right. We always have something coming up to serve oh, yeah. women. We work with professional faith-based women, high achievers that are ready. That is so key. Not thinking about it, but you must be ready to invest in yourself, to take your business to the next level, to take your ministry to the next level, to take your career to the next level, because we work with increasing your clarity, your confidence, and like I said, ultimately your coins. You can connect with me at moniquefleming's.net or unapologeticallyunmuzzle.com. But we work with women who are hungry. You have to be hungry to get into our programs because our programs are aggressive. Um, when I work with ladies, whether it's in a coaching program or in the academy, it's aggressive. It's aggressive in teaching and training and coaching because I'm very results oriented and I help women to actually maximize what's in their hand. I help them really understand their God abilities and create profitable streams of income from it. So it's all about starting your business, uh, creating a profitable stream of income, increasing that side hustle, increasing your profitability, even in the workplace. If you say, hey, I don't wanna start a business, that's not for me. Well, we'll talk about that, but I'll still show you how to increase your profitability in the workplace, how to negotiate like a boss. Because sometimes as women, we don't negotiate like a boss. We take whatever uh, they give us. We don't know how to show our value and our worth. And we're just sitting there hoping that someone will give us a raise. You do not get what you think you should get. You only get what you're able to negotiate. 
I'll repeat that. You do not yeah, get say that again. Say that again. Get. You only get what you're able to negotiate. So showing up and be a good employee and you think that you're going to go to that performance of review and they're going to give you something, you are absolutely wrong. You're absolutely wrong. You're only able to get what you negotiate, meaning you have a paper trail showing the list of achievements that you have done in the last year, how you have brought value to the company and help them understand that that 3% is not enough and help them to understand. That means you have to do some market research on your position. Come on, I'm helping you be unapologetically unmuzzled so that when you go to the table, you're able to show them, I brought this and it yielded you that. I brought this and it yielded you this. You have to talk numbers, sister. We can't, we can't just talk about how we did a good job and let them give us a little check and you take that 2% raise. I help women be able to uh, open up their mouths, express who they are, share the numbers, share the value that they have brought to the company and negotiate raises because you do not get what you think you should get, whether it is in the workplace, in your business, in ministry, you only get what you're able to negotiate. Mm, I like that. You only get what you're <laughs> able to negotiate. You're amazing. You're incredible. i um, sitting here and you did tell them how to connect with you. Did I hear how they can best yes. connect with you? Yes, you can Good. connect with me at MoniqueFlemings.net. Okay, MoniqueFlemings.net. That's my website or unapologeticallyunmuzzled.com. Either of those are my places where you can just drop in. You can connect with me on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on uh, all the social media uh, uh, platforms as Dr. Monique Fleming. If you go there, Instagram, just connect with me. I would love, love, love to connect with you. Yes, we're always taking in you know women clients um, in our in our uh, firm, and we would love to work with you. But you must be ready and aggressive to even jump into one of our six month coaching programs or into my year long uh, mentoring program or my academy for women leaders. I would love to work with you, but we, we do work with people that are ready to invest in themselves. Mm, I love it. You know, we, we have a segment here and I'm going to encourage you all to connect with Dr. Monique Fleming. Flemings, make sure you do that now. Do it when, do it now, and stay in the conversation with her. You're going to find she's amazing. Yes, you'll find she's incredible. But more importantly, you'll find the person that's on the other side talking now is the same individual that you're going to be with, whether you're on the phone, on a Zoom, if you can, or I shouldn't just promote Zoom. I don't make any money with Zoom. Or if through the power of these fiber optic lines, you and her are connecting, she's going to be the exact same way. And that's pretty cool. Um, we have a segment here, at Dr. Monique Flemings, called Today is my January 1st. And, and that's, that's one of our, our mantras here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show. And for all the family to tune in every night at 11 p.m., you can go ahead and say it. Today is my January 1st. That feels good, doesn't it? Happy New Year to you. And for all the new folks who are watching for the very, very first time, today is my January 1st represents a do-over. It represents a fresh start. Today is my January 1st means your past your past no longer equals your future. Isn't that exciting that you don't have to wait till December 31st at 11.59 p.m. on the back of a napkin, if you're lucky, maybe after a couple of drinks, not Dr. Monique, obviously, but after a couple of drinks and say, I, today's my January 1st. It happens now. My question to Dr. Monique Flemings is when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And number two, what's your message to inspire or to empower folks that now like, they got to go out and they got to implement the things they know they need to do? I love that. I love that, Shay. Today is my January 1st means I get a clean slate. That today is a new beginning. I get a clean slate. And what I would say to you is this. This is one of my, my quotes that I say all the time is that every time you procrastinate for whatever reason, you think you don't have the resources, you're not smart enough, you don't have enough education. Every time you procrastinate, listen, somebody flatlines. Somebody flatlines, somebody dies because you have procrastinated because that means that you procrastinating is cutting off the lifeline to someone else. If you had an understanding and a revelation that your life is so much bigger than you, that what's on the inside of you is so much bigger than you, you would understand that when you procrastinate, when you decide not to pull the trigger and write the book, when you decide not to start the business, when you decide not to start the nonprofit, when you decide that I'm not going to do what was placed on the inside of me, my God abilities, 
then somebody is waiting on your solution. They die. Somebody's waiting on that book. They die. Someone's waiting on that business, that community program. They will die. So this being your January 1st, you have the mandate to clear the slate, to get started, stop procrastinating, because every time you procrastinate, for whatever reason, somebody flatlines. Think about that. Mm, everybody flatlines. Think about that. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Monique Flemings. You heard from the one and only Dr. Monique Flemings, unapologetically unmuzzled. Oh, that is super incredible. We appreciate you. I'm looking forward to connecting with you again real soon. Can't wait to have eye to eye contact. You're just amazing. And you, you, the viewers, you just show up at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or wherever you find us on the on-demand streaming platforms. We appreciate you. I want you to know that you're amazing. I want you to know that you're incredible. And that for you, today is your January 1st. And for you, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name, for those folks that maybe forgot, is Shay Brown. The happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. Remember this time is long. It really is. Life, on the other hand, is very, very short. So you got to live in the moment and you got to make it count. God bless and we wish you success. Thanks a lot, Dr. Malik. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, we out of here. See you next time. Peace.